Today, you are learning four easy ways to preserve pomegranates. Make sure you watch to the end when I tell you which method is the best. Aloha friends and welcome to Eating Richly, where cooking time is connecting time. If you're new here, I'm Diana Johnson, a cooking instructor who loves connecting with people through food. And today I'm showing you how to reduce food waste and get the most out of each beautiful pomegranate you buy or harvest. As you can see, I buy pomegranates in bulk to save some money and because I just really like eating them. The first key is to make sure you buy bright red pomegranates that are heavy. The heavier they are, the more juice they have in each little seed. And ripe pomegranates have flatter sides from the pressure of those juice-filled arils or seeds. So don't buy ones that are perfectly round like a ball. Apply gentle pressure with your fingertips to make sure that the pomegranate is firm with no bruised, mushy spots. Brown marks are okay as long as the rind isn't split open. This can happen naturally when the pomegranate is so ripe that the seeds are just burst out, but it can also happen from a fall. If you're eating or preserving a broken pomegranate right away, it's fine to buy one, but don't let them sit long because they will go bad quickly. And that's a crime. Pomegranates can be kept whole on the counter for about a week, in a cool dry place like a basement for about a month, or in the refrigerator for about two months but you can also preserve them for up to a year using four different methods. And if you don't know how to open a pomegranate, don't worry, that video is coming up next. The first way to preserve the pomegranate seeds or arils is by freezing them. This is the easiest method and they're pretty comparable to fresh seeds which only keep one to two weeks in the refrigerator. I also like freezing the pomegranate seeds because it's the most nutritious way to then eat preserved pomegranate. By eating the whole seeds, you're getting all that fiber along with the juice. Start by spreading your seeds out on a paper towel and picking out any that are clear or seeds that are brown or cloudy. Then gently pat the seeds dry and spread them out on a rimmed baking sheet. Place the sheet in the freezer for one to two hours until the seeds are frozen solid. At this point, you can transfer the seeds to an airtight container and keep them in the freezer for up to a year. I like them best within four to six months though. You can use these any way that you would use a fresh pomegranate arrow. I like them with Brussels sprouts, on top of pumpkin oatmeal, or in a sparkling cocktail. The next way to preserve pomegranate seeds whole is to dehydrate them. I don't use this method often, but it gives you this unique sweet and sour ingredient ingredient named anardana, which I am likely mispronouncing. The taste is similar to pomegranate molasses, which we will be making, but you can use them in things like rubs or chutneys where you wouldn't want to be adding a liquid syrup. They also add a nice texture and flavor to salads and soups. Think of them as a way to add a sour fruitiness that is great for layering in flavors. The cook I talked to when I was in Sri Lanka air dries the seeds over about 10 days because they don't have an oven, but you can use a food dehydrator or dehydrate them on the lowest heat setting in your oven. Spread your seeds out on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Bake for about four hours at 170 degrees Fahrenheit using a spatula every hour to stir them and make sure that they dry out evenly. Once your anardana is complete, you can store it in a sealed jar in the cupboard for several months. The third method we're going to use is juicing and freezing the pomegranate seeds. If you have a juicer, you can definitely use it, but I just use a blender. Place the pomegranate seeds in and pulse a few times to release the juice. If you blend it too much, you start to get a cloudy juice and it can get a little bitter. Strain the juice through a fine mesh strainer and push down with a spoon or spatula to get any remaining juice pressed out. The seed pulp can go in your compost bin and the juice can be frozen in ice cube trays. 
Then pop those frozen juice cubes into a bag or airtight container in the freezer. I love adding these frozen pomegranate juice cubes to smoothies or using them to chill cocktails, sparkling water, or in a beverage jar at a party. The final method for preserving pomegranates also uses the juice, but this time we're boiling it down into a pomegranate molasses. For every cup of pomegranate juice you have, you'll need a tablespoon of brown sugar or unrefined coconut sugar and one and a half teaspoons of fresh lemon juice. Bring your pomegranate juice to a gentle boil, then stir in the sugar and lemon juice until the sugar dissolves. Reduce the heat until it's barely simmering and let it simmer about 15 minutes if you started with one cup of juice or up to an hour if you started with four cups of juice. You want to finish with a thick syrup consistency consistency that has a deep red color. And if you want a sweeter dessert type syrup, you can always add more sugar while cooking. Store your pomegranate molasses in a jar or a glass bottle in the fridge for a few months. In addition to using it to glaze meats or in stews or curries, you can add pomegranate molasses to cocktails, stir into sparkling water with some orange juice, or drizzle over vanilla ice cream. Now you know four different ways to preserve pomegranates at home, and the best method is really whichever one gives you the product that you're most excited to use. Anybody have any questions? Let me know in the comments. Just remember that whether it's with me in the comments or out in the world, you can be real and be kind. I've also got a playlist here for you of more ways to reduce food waste, and I'll see you in the next video. This can happen naturally when but it can also happen from a fall. Heavier, that's the bad side. I dropped this one. And that's a crime.